Hello everyone, today we have for you something from the Janto Urinary or GU world. Uh, what I have in front of me is a bladder biopsy and uh, it has some unusual findings so let's get right into it. Um, this has a lot of conventional urothelial carcinoma which is not the topic of today's talk but rather areas like this so what this is, is this is a small cell carcinoma uh, it within the bladder. Now small cell carcinomas are extremely rare. They're um, up to about 1% of all bladder malignancies, um, but it can be less than that. And um, the age range that we tend to see these in is very similar to what we would expect to see with urothelial carcinoma. So these tend to be adults, usually over age 50, uh, men more than women, and they tend to also still have that smoking history or tobacco exposure. Um, patients will often complain of gross hematuria or uh, bloody urine, um, but they may have symptoms of dysuria or even obstructive symptoms. Even though this is a small cell carcinoma, uh, it's actually quite infrequent to see features of hypercalcemia or ectopic ACTH production. Grossly, these are gonna look very similar as well to your urothelial carcinoma uh, friends as we go up to like a 10x here. Um, so they tend to be large um, polypoid masses that can be found anywhere within the bladder. Okay, but most frequently you're going to see these as lateral wall lesions or even in within the dome. They may or may not be ulcerated, uh, so that's something else to keep in mind. Okay, and by, uh, by definition, these are invasive tumors, so they're at least lamina propria, okay? Uh, you're not gonna find small cell as in situ. However, the caveat of that is that these can arise within a background of urothelial carcinoma in situ, or as we saw in the other areas, within frank urothelial carcinoma. Um, as you can see here, this is very similar in appearance uh, to small cell carcinoma in the lung or kind of anywhere else. So we have, there's uh, very hyperchromatic nuclei in these small, medium-sized cells. There is some molding, there's some crush. Um, if you do see the chromatin, it tends to be very coarse. Let's see if maybe I go up to 40X, if we can see that. Not really, they're pretty hyperchromatic. So let's go back down to where you guys can just appreciate the architecture a little more since there's not much to see on the nuclear features. Um, and because of the hyperchromatic um, chromatin, uh, you also tend to have inconspicuous nucleoli, okay? So don't expect to see very prominent nucleoli. And within this, you're frequently gonna see mitotic figures and necrosis. Now this is a biopsy so it's pretty small, um, but this is convincingly a small cell component. And there are two pieces within this biopsy that show this. So let's see if we can go up to the other piece here. So again, just very similar architecture. Having some trouble staying in focus today, so um, just show you some of the some of the features. Oh, what happened? Let's get back. Okay, maybe this will help with our focus. Oh goodness. Okay, it does not like that fold. Ah. Uh. All right, we'll just go back to that first piece. It had a little better morphology anyway. Oh, so there's one. Okay. So, uh, small cell carcinomas. Um, other things that you should know about them is that um, you shouldn't really have overlapping, okay? So even though you're gonna have molding of the nuclei um, and you can have that, that crush artifact, um, 
you shouldn't have where it looks like they're piling on top of each other. Like here you can see that even though they're crowded and they're really smushed together, uh, there's no real 3D effect. There's no real piles of anything. Um, I do have some stains to show you since this is kind of what we're getting from that. Um, so these tend to be um, gata negative, but what is cool about this case is that because there's all this background urothelial carcinoma, so the urothelial carcinoma is staining positive for gata. Um, but if we go to those areas, here's one, and our better area was over here. So here you can see like there's, we'll go higher power because I know it's sometimes hard to tell on IHC. Um, but all these more blue areas, this is our tumor. And what we notice is that there's, there are some gata positive cells, but this is not tumor. Like this section here, focus, maybe, no, not gonna work with me. Okay, oh, technical difficulties this morning. We'll just stay at 10X then. Um, so the, the actual pale blue areas in this focus are the tumor cells. So you want to make sure that you know what your stains are going to highlight, um, including normal background, okay? Um, so in this, the actual tumor, the small cell component of the tumor is negative. And again, going back to your urothelial carcinoma, where you can see it's that intense nuclear staining. And again, Okay, um, small cell, okay, so neuroendocrine tumors. So we have chromogranin. And again, these are our areas of tumor. So here's our good piece. Now you might say, well, this does not look that impressive at low power, and I would have to agree with that. Uh, however, when we go into areas of definite tumor, we do see that there is some of this, um, some staining with chromogranin. Whereas if we go into the areas that have urothelial carcinoma, what you tend to pick up is a little bit of artifact on the surface. So like this, where it's just staining the edge, that is artifact, that's not positive staining. Um, and pretty much all stains will do that. So it's just something to keep in mind. But we do have some chromogranin. And the caveat, no, nah, this is a better focus here. So this is some true chromogranin staining. Uh, and we also have synaptophysin. The synaptophysin is a little funnier because there is some staining in uh, like the conventional urothelial carcinoma, but when we go to these small cell areas, look how beautiful that is. Okay, so if you go down again to 10X, so we can see uh, it is not really wanting to get into focus today on these IHCs. Um, there we go, that's a little better, it's at 20X. Um, so what you can see is that it's highlighting the individual cells, okay? Um, whereas, again, if we go into uh, the urothelial carcinoma, it's staining, but it's more nonspecific. Now, while I definitely can appreciate how that could be confusing, uh, we have one more stain that can that can really help you. This is a CD56. So again, we have the conventional urothelial carcinoma. And when we get into the small cell areas, very similar picture, right? Where it's highlighting pretty much every single cell. It's beautiful, okay? And we'll again go back and focus. And this is the urothelial, uh, conventional urothelial carcinoma component. 
So you can see how it's not staining that. Okay, let's go back to the H&E. Now the caveat to these stains, the neuroendocrine stains, as we just go back to this piece again, maybe a different area. So, oh, I don't know why we're having so many focus issues today. Um, so the caveat with these is that you don't necessarily have to have the neuroendocrine staining to call this small cell component. This morphology is enough. However, for your stains, you should expect your synaptophyzer and chromogranin, as I showed you. Your neuron-specific enolase, or NSE, can be positive. Uh, it's a small cell carcinoma, so your TTF1 can be positive. And you can also see things such as CK7 positivity. You can see CAM5.2. Uh, as well as EMA. And about a quarter of cases will have CKIT or CD117 positivity. Um, your negative stains, so uh, CK20 you'd expect to be positive. Uh, CA, if you were worried, is this maybe uh, an adenocarcinoma from the colon? Because you can see with the stroma that it can have this sort of um, mixoid desmoplastic type look to it. Um, if you were worried that this is a lymphoma, which is a very good thought, uh, these would be like your CD20, CD3, uh, those would all be negative, CD45 or LCA. Um, and also you really shouldn't see like your um, P40, P63, those kinds of stains that you would normally do for your ethelial carcinoma. Uh, again, I want to stress that your uh, neuroendocrine markers do not have to be positive in these and it's not unusual for them to be negative or give you some unusual staining like we saw with the synaptophysin. As far as molecular, it's a little all over the place. Um, I the, the most frequent mutations that you can see, even though it's, it's a massive list, um, would be losses of things like 10Q, 4Q, 5Q, 13Q, gains of 8Q, 5P, 6P, 20Q. Uh, you can see amplification of E2, F3, uh, deletions or mutations of RB1. So we get uh, chromosome 17 in there. And um, what's interesting about small cell carcinoma within the bladder is that uh, we see TP53 or P53 mutations more often than in conventional urothelial carcinoma. So that's, that's an interesting molecular finding to keep in the back of your mind. As well as uh, we often see TERT mutations, but only small cell carcinoma in the bladder. You would not really expect to see TERT mutations in small cell carcinoma elsewhere in the body. Okay? Uh, as far as treatment, we'll just drive around a little bit. So for these they're pretty much gonna do a radical cystectomy. Now, when wouldn't they do a radical cystectomy? Would be things like uh, the patient already has uh, uh, metastasis, in which case they won't do a radical cystectomy necessarily, but they will add on systemic therapy. Um, these tend to respond quite well to chemo. However, small cell carcinoma has similar prognosis to uh, lung small cell carcinoma. And what does that mean? Well, uh, overall, the prognosis is not very good. Um, the five-year survival is reported anywhere between 5 to 25 percent. Sorry, as we just kind of go to a different area. Anyone who's used to using a clip probably uh, goes a little crazy with me because I just use my hands to drive the slides. Um, so 8 to 25 percent survival over five years. Uh, however, there is definite improvement if they give them neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Um, they also can give them radiation with some improvement. Um, and factors that give an even worse prognosis to an to a tumor that already has not a very good prognosis are things like advanced age, so older than 65, if they present at high stage, which these often do, um, as well as uh, metastases. Um, those are kind of the things that you want to keep in mind for small cell carcinoma. Now, this is a small cell component as well as your thelial cell. So when do you actually call small cell carcinoma? Well, I, unless you have a, 
a biopsy that's nothing but small cell carcinoma, I would not do that because um, you actually need the majority of the tumor to be small cell carcinoma to frankly call it that. Okay, uh, so for this, you would want to describe both areas. So you would want to say uh, that there's conventional uh, your invasive urothelial carcinoma as well as small cell carcinoma. Um, this um, biopsy, I, we did not have detrusor present, but remember you always want to mention is there detrusor so that they can figure out is this really a stage one or is it stage two, um, at least stage two uh, with muscle involvement. So um, this was just a, a really nice case to show you something that, that's very rare in the bladder, um, but something that you should still be uh, on the lookout for. And we'll just end, kind of zooming around a little bit. Um, oh my goodness. So this is what I have for today as we go back to this first view of some of the conventional urothelial carcinoma, which I can zoom in. Uh, if you like this video, hmm, minus me not being in focus. Uh, if you like this video, please hit like. Please hit subscribe if you aren't subscribed to us already. Um, if there's things that I missed, uh, things you'd like to add in about small cell carcinoma of the bladder. Again, this is a shot of conventional urothelial carcinoma, so you can appreciate how um, morphologically this is different from the previous. Um, I, I realized that we did not go over urothelial carcinoma in this video. Um, that's really a topic for a different short view, review. Um, but yes, if you have any comments for me, things you'd like me to go over, please let me know. And um, there's been some really great suggestions lately, so we might end up putting together like a, a compilation uh, video or presentation of all these great things that, that people have been sending to me. Uh, and that's what I have for you guys today. So thanks for, for watching, for sticking around this long, and have a great day. Stay safe.